Hello, good to see you. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the technical analysis of Dogecoin, Doge technical analysis. I'm gonna be giving a Tesla technical analysis, a Coinbase technical analysis, and a Disney technical analysis since Disney was a little bit interesting today. So let's get right into the video. Let's get right into Dogecoin. Dogecoin had a massive percent move, you know, it just uh, doubled your money overnight. Dogecoin 100% up overnight, M amazing move. So let's go into the technicals. Well, why did I buy Dogecoin? Well, it was partly because my stream told me to get on the ride, but I only get on the ride if it makes sense. And it made sense to me. Boom, we had this nice, good, pennant pattern right over here after the initial move up from 18 cents. So I had a little bit from the breakout of 0.18. Look at that. We w went up to 0.18, sold off. Once we break through 0.18, if there's follow through in the market, we can see continued upside movement, which we did. But then we had another pennant pattern yesterday at the end of market and we started to break bullish, you know, to 0.26. So in at 0.18, averaging up to 0.26. Now we get a nice good breakout on Dogecoin. And what I was saying is it would be really good for the bulls of Dogecoin if Dogecoin could just go sideways. You know, super volatile. Everybody's looking at a one minute chart. But I'm just like, just relax. Just put, put zoom out. Go to the hourly time frame. This is the hourly time frame on TradingView as it's a better chart than Robinhood for sure. And we got this nice good move up. And I was saying, as Dogecoin was selling off, watch out for 0 0.28. 0 0.28, why 0.28? Well, it's the former breakout area. Look at this. We moved up, we sold off from 0.28. Once we break through 0.28, look at that. We come right back down to 0.28, we move right back up. That tells you, okay, that level's important. We came close to 0.28 yet again on the last hour, and now we're starting to push up. So it'd be a win for the Doge Bulls if we could stay above 0.28. As long as we're above 0.28, in my opinion, ideally 0.3, then we can continue the uptrend. Parker, hello, how's it going? So we can continue the uptrend as long as we're above 0 0.28, 0 0.3. And again, the sky is the limit. So it's more so it gets riskier and riskier to buy Dogecoin at these highs. So it's more of a hold, in my opinion. If you're long Dogecoin, it's a hold. Again, not financial advice. I'm not telling you whether to buy or to sell. To me, Dogecoin is a hold at this point in time. And if Dogecoin starts to sell off, maybe I just take a break even stop loss. Otherwise, I can be on the ride for Dogecoin as it continues up. Who knows what the price target is? Maybe it's 50 cents. Maybe it's 75 cents. Maybe it's a dollar. Maybe it's $3, $5. Maybe it's $100. That would be less likely because it's so far reverted from the mean but that's definitely a possibility for Dogecoin. So hopefully that technical analysis helped you on Dogecoin. Let's get right into Tesla, TSLA. Tesla, nice good bull move. If you watched yesterday's video, I said, hey, I bought the dip at 7.30 on Tesla. There's, your, there's the average cost on Tesla, and we should see a test of 7.50. Where did we, where, what was Tesla's high of day? Tesla's high of day was 7.49.30, so 70 cents off from 7.50, that's okay, but, Tesla, nice good bull move. Unfortunately, I was just commentating and going racehorse on Tesla since 7.35. As you can see, there's a nice good ascending triangle breakout. Do you see that? We have higher lows into a flat top resistance. So that's a higher low, higher low, higher low. And eventually we start to pop and we popped on out and we started to pull back. And unfortunately, I actually, um, Tesla actually put me red on the day because I decided to sell some puts. So net net the day, it's a little bit of a red day, minus, minus $79. That's unfortunate because I was plus 200 in the morning. Again, over trading, probably doing a little bit too much. Same Selling same day puts is dumb. And the reason I did that was because we were forming a nice good bull flag over here. You know, we're making higher lows, we're making lower highs. And right here, we started to make higher lows and then we started to make a nice good flag pattern I went ahead and bought Tesla right over here by, via selling puts. And unfortunately, once Tesla made uh, that low, I'm like, okay, we still have a double bottom. But once we started to break that double bottom and break down, I had to cut my losses on Tesla. Unfortunate to put me from green to red, but had I been right, I would have collected $500 um, premium, $500 credit, as long as Tesla was stayed above 745. Or, yeah, 745. So Tesla did not stay above 745. So guess what? I had to stop out and you know lose $170. Whatever, it happens. I took I took the risk on a Friday and Tesla decided to fade most of the move. A lot of times on Friday, there's a lot of choppiness and it can, a lot of mar the market makers, um, you know, institutions like to drive 
things back towards the mean. So, you know, it's a little oversold, we drive back to the mean. Overbought, we drive back to the mean. That tends to happen, mean reversion on Fridays. And I should have been more prepared for that. That's obviously in hindsight. I really thought Tesla had the momentum to break to the upside and it didn't. So it had to just be a nice good stop out. But Tesla, that's just my uh, trading today on Tesla. What's Tesla looking like moving forward? Well, Tesla, if we can get above, you know, that 750 level, we can start testing some of these upper resistance areas. So what I look for is previous consolidation on the hourly time frame. And look, 760 is going to be a pretty big resistance. And then even after that, you know, 765. So if Tesla starts to move higher and breaks 750, we can go up and test something like 760 to 770. Tesla likes to move in about 10 to $15 increments of resistance and support. And so that's the bull case on Tesla. Get above 760 and we'll talk about that later. Maybe we'll talk about 800 in a few weeks. Um, on the bear side of things, I wouldn't want Tesla coming too much beneath 730. 730 seems to be a flush point, call it 727. That would be a pretty big downside break point and that would be pretty bearish. Maybe Tesla would like to test something like 715 on the downside, maybe 710. And that just comes from prior support levels if we zoom out a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of consolidation over here, 715, 713. These are just areas to potentially watch out for. And obviously there's the 700 psychological all the way down to 695. At this point in time, I wouldn't want Tesla spending too much time beneath 695. Otherwise that could be pretty bearish and Tesla could roll over after this move. So it's kind of in this kind of pivotal make or break it point, you know, higher lows on the daily time frame, nice good trending channel. So that's something to keep an eye out for Tesla. And so hopefully that technical analysis of Tesla helped you moving forward. Let's talk about Coinbase. Coinbase, I talked, I said, if Coinbase flushes 320, then 320 can potentially be the downside break point to where Coinbase could drop a lot. Well, Coinbase, low of the day was about 320. 320, the bulls held it first thing in the morning. I actually had some trades on Coinbase. Just a little bit of a breakout if I, you know, go ahead and show my trades over here. But we had this nice good, you know, you know, uh, pivot right here. We had a nice good flag pattern and it, it popped bullish, which was super nice. So if we zoom in super tightly over here on the one minute fast time frame, had a nice good impulsive move up, accumulating in the flag, add on the flag break, peel some profits, peel profits, peel profits, peel profits. And then uh, eventually, you know, the last one just wicked me out. Coinbase had a nice good move later in the day after that. But where's Coinbase headed? Well, let's do some technicals. I'm just going to remove the show trades here real quick. How's it going, Parker? Good to see you. <laughs> um, if, we, if we're looking at these technicals, we're making higher lows and higher highs, which is great. So if Coinbase can get above all 343, 3443, then we can start talking about that 360, 370 area. So 343 leads the door up to 360 to 370. And remember, there's a lot of resistance up there. I mean, that was a pretty big waterfall sell off off the beginning. Coinbase, Coinbase has a lot of potential, but it also has a lot of potential to sell off. In terms of the bear case, we need to find this important pivot right here where we you know, we tried to sell off aggressively underneath 330 and failed and rallied. So if we find Coinbase underneath that level, it could probably turn into some resistance and we could see some more downside. So flush point on Coinbase is about 329. Look for potentially lower prices if that is happening on Coinbase. Otherwise, the trend is your friend until it stops. And right now we're starting to start a new trend change to the upside on Coinbase. So that's like Coinbase technicals. Let's talk about Disney. I actually traded Disney today. Lightly profitable on Disney, not as much as I would have liked, only $21, Bare, pr pretty lame. That's mostly because I try. I gave Disney the chance to break out and have a really good move. So if we show our trades here real quick, Disney, nice good flag pop um, over here. So Disney, you know, we're moving up, sideways consolidation, there's your pop, boom, 100 shares long, Disney, peel some profits, peel some profits, peel some profits, and nice good move. I even added a vertical spread, you know, as, as we were popping out of this flag formation. And Disney, it was kind of a scenario where it had many, it had, it had many opportunities to go up, but it didn't go up. So right about here, we have their nice good flag break. You know, there's your bull flag. There's your pop right over there, over 188. Nice, good move up. But then similar to Tesla, we started to form a consolidation range and we started to form higher lows. 
boom, I go ahead and go long Disney, just over 188.50. And once we broke that support, I stopped out. So that's what gave back a lot of the profits on Disney. And I'm glad I did because look, Disney decided to drop the rest of the day, kind of formed a little zigzag, a little bit of a wedge, popped it bullish based off the spy. But moving forward, where is Disney likely headed? Well, Disney likes to move in about $5 increments. And it's just a little bit sideways on the, on the, day, on the four hour time frame. If we look at the daily time frame, just a little bit sideways, not the strongest of names, but Disney, I really do believe that Disney has good potential. We got to hope that that's a higher low pivot thrown in on the daily. We've kind of got like a little pennant pattern pitching, pinching. So we're kind of pinching towards the apex. This is the apex of this uh, wedge triangle. So we, we want to see where Disney wants to break. And once we start getting pinching and we look for a volume breakout, if volume starts to break above, you know, 15 million, that's where Disney could potentially break out or break down. So what are the flush points and the breakout points? Well, I do believe that because we had a doji day today, you know, we had a, uh, the today's range was relatively muted. You know, we gapped up, but really didn't do much. And so it's an indecisive candle. So because of that, whenever we get an indecisive candle, I usually like to check out the top end and check out the bottom end. And so what that would mean $186 a share is the flush point for Disney short term. But on the high side, 189 should be the upside break point. So what you can do is I'm just going to set an alert above 189 and, and um, I can throw in a buy order there. I can use a relatively tight stop loss. I could use, you know, 187 as a stop loss, 185 as a stop loss, but 186 and 189 are your break points for Disney. So hopefully you enjoyed this recap video. I had a lot of fun trading today. Again, a little bit of over trading on my part, but that's okay. I need to, I'll just, I'll get better over time. I just need to be a little bit more aware of it and get ready for some crazy action in the next week. So if you uh, be sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe, comment on the video, say hi at Weenie Trades Live, say, hey, I liked your video or say, hey, could you talk more about this or that and give me that feedback and I'll see you in the next one.